Hey guys, Jim here with another video for you. This is 50 Years in Film, 2018. But before we begin, at the end of this video, if you like what you see, please consider giving me a thumbs up, a possible subscribe, but most importantly, please leave those comments below. Now, 2018 is kind of a strange year. We're all over the place this year. We got a lot of superhero movies. We got a lot of horror movies. We got a lot of action movies. One thing that we do not have is comedies. I don't have any. Although I do have some movies in this list that are comedic at times. But we're just going to jump around in genre like we always do. But before we do, I want to start with the normal caveats. These are not all the films from 2018. Far from it. These are simply the films from that year that I own in my collection. And also, this is not a ranking video of any kind. This is simply, again, just a recap of some of the films that came out in 2018. So without further ado, we're going to start, we're going to go right through these like we always do, jump around in genre, but we are going to start off with Solo, A Star Wars Story. And here we go with the goofy name again, starring Alden Enrich. Uh, en 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 Enrich? I, I don't know, Woody Harrelson, Amelia Clark, and uh, uh, Donald Glover. Directed by Ron Howard. But here's where the story on this one is. Halfway through production, originally this film was going to be directed by the two guys, uh, Lord and Taylor, who directed the Lego movie and the uh, 221 Jump Street movies. And they were halfway through production on this film, and suddenly the people at Disney or Lucasfilm or whatever you want decided they didn't like the direction the movie was going, canned them, and then brought in Ron Howard to just finish the script and try to get it through as quickly as possible. And this film is very uneven. Personally, I don't even think this movie really needs to exist. It's not horrible, but it's not great. The best thing about this movie to me is Donald Glover. He definitely embodies Billy D. Williams as Lando Calrissian. The rest of it, eh, unnecessary in my opinion. Then we're going to switch to a movie directed towards the young younger crowd with the house and the clock with a clock in the, its walls. That's what that one's a tongue twister. Starring Jack Black and Kate Blanchett. This one is directed by Eli Roth, who up until this point basically specialized in horror movies, uh aka the Hostel films and Cabin Fever and most recently Thanksgiving. To be honest, I've never seen this movie. I got this for my wife, and she really enjoys this movie a lot. Uh, again, I've seen little bits and pieces of it. What I've seen was really good. Uh, anytime you've got Jack Black and Kate Blanchett, I'm sure this movie's fun. Now we're going to switch to some anim animation. The first one is Ralph Breaks the Internet. The sequel to Wreck-It Ralph, of course. Starring uh, John C. Riley, reprising his role as Ralph. I like this movie. It's not as good as the original, but I do like it. And then we've got The Incredibles 2 from Pixar. The sequel to the original, of course. And reprising their voice roles from the original film. Craig T. Nelson. Holly Hunter, and Samuel L. Jackson, among others. Great movie. It really is. I don't know which one I prefer, because I really still love the original one on a lot of different levels, but both Incredibles movies, they're great movies. And continuing with the animation, but now we're moving into the superheroes. We have Spider-Man. Into the Spider Verse. Uh, we're making sure I got the right one here. Okay. And this one is directed by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. They were the main guys behind it. And this movie rocks. It absolutely rocks. Uh, this one, best animated film that year. 
and deservedly so. It's it's a great film. It's a great Spider-Man film. And then we're switching from animated superheroes to the superhero genre because we got a lot of them from this year. In no particular order, we're going to start off with Deadpool 2. Starring Ryan Reynolds, Josh Brolin, and uh, what the hell is her name? Zazie Bates or something like that? I don't know. She's great. She's she's phenomenal in this movie. And this is a phenomenal movie. This movie is hilarious, but it's got a lot of heart. Um, a lot of dick jokes, but it's got a lot of heart towards the end. I really like Deadpool 2. I cannot wait for the third installment that's coming out next month or two months from now. Love this movie. And then probably the most surprising superhero movie that year, for me anyways, was Aquaman. Directed by James Wan. And starring Jason Momoa, William Dafoe, Patrick Wilson, and Amber Heard. Aquaman used to be the joke that they would run constantly on the TV show Entourage. That uh, they were going to have uh, the main character, who was an actor in the show, get a superhero break. And he was going to play Aquaman. And the big joke was that, you know, Aquaman was the, the worst superhero ever and blah, blah, blah. And then the joke in the show was that James Cameron was attached to the direct and suddenly the guy wanted to do it. But that was, that was basically the joke about Aquaman until this movie. This movie's great. It is absolutely one of the best DC Universe movies. It's right there with Wonder Woman as far as I'm concerned with the best one in that newer span of movies. I'm not including the Dark Knight trilogy. Those are completely different. I'm talking about everything that came out from Man of Steel up. This is a great movie. And then we've got Venom. Starring Tom Hardy. And uh, Michelle Williams, directed by Ruben Fleischer. Fun movie. It's not great, but it's fun. Tom Hardy's good as is Venom. He's much better than Topher Grace, anyways. Then we've got Ant Man and the Wasp, the follow up to Ant Man, starring Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, Michael Douglas. And in this particular case, Walter Goggins, the great Walter Goggins, as the villain in this movie. Very lightweight movie, but it is fun. But the next two are great. First, Black Panther. Starring the late, great Chadwick Boseman in the title role. With Michael B. Jordan playing Killmonger, the villain. And I think Killmonger is one of the most interesting villains in the entire MCU. Black Panther not only was a critical and financial hit, it was a cultural phenomenon here in the States. Because all I kept reading about in, in the stories and seeing on the news, how young black children... Boys and girls, and actually not even young, just black folk of all age, were so happy to finally be represented in the superhero uh, genre as well as it was. And Black Panther is without a doubt one of the top tier MCU movies. Rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. Incredible actor and by all accounts, an incredible human being. But we saved the superhero movie for last, of course. How could we not? Avengers Infinity War. Starring way too many people to mention here. But we will mention Josh Brolin as Thanos. This movie, of course, was a ginormous, ginormous hit. The biggest hit of that year. And it broke a lot of people's hearts at the end of this movie. And they were, you know, were upset with the ending and this and that and the other. And like I've always said in these movies, hey, no death is real. These are superheroes. They always find ways to come back. Until Endgame, of course. 
But Affinity War is. It's a great movie. The Russo brothers started off their tie-in with the MCU, starting with the uh, Captain America um, uh, Winter Soldier, and then did Civil War, and the last two Avengers movies, Infinity War and Endgame. And I would say that those two guys are four for four when it comes to Marvel. All four movies are great. Okay, now we're going to switch gears. We're going to move over to the drama and the action. And we're going to start off with a real hidden gem from that year, I think. Bad Times at the El Royale. With a great cast of Jeff Bridges, John Hamm, Chris Hemsworth, Dakota Johnson. But especially Cynthia Erivo. And where is he? Lewis Pullman. There he is. The son of Bill Pullman. This is a really good movie. Uh, written and directed by Drew Goddard, who uh, directed uh, Cabin in the Woods, which is one of my favorite movies. This is a very, very fun movie. It's kind of, A lot of people consider this a Tarantino ripoff. I don't. I just consider this a great, entertaining movie. If you've never seen this film, please check it out. It's great. And I guarantee, up until maybe Furioso... You've never seen Chris Hemsworth like this. This movie's great. Then we've got Sicario, Day of the Sidaldo, starring Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin. This is the sequel to Sicario, of course. Uh, written by the same uh, Taylor Sheridan who uh, created uh, Yellowstone, the show that's really big now. Directed by Stefano Salima, who I'm not familiar with. This movie's really good. Uh, I think it's underrated. A lot of people shit on this movie. They they say, you know, oh, it's not as good as the first one. Well, hey, that first movie was directed by Denny Villeneuve, and it's incredible. I wouldn't go so far as to say this movie's incredible. But it's very, very good. If you've never seen Day of the Sedalda, check it out. Now we're definitely in the action. And we're starting with Mission Impossible, Fallout. Starring Tom Cruise, Ving Rhames, Simon Pegg, and uh, Superman himself, Henry, Can Henry Cavill. Fallout's great. It really is. This one and Rogue Nation are my two favorite Mission Impossible movies. This movie's really, really, really fun. As is this one, Equalizer 2, starring Denzel Washington and directed by Antoine Fuqua. The second installment of the Equalizer trilogy. And quite honestly, I cannot rank these movies. To me, all three of them are equally great. Denzel kicks ass like he always does. Excellent movie. Now we're starting to go into the science fiction action with Upgrade. Written and directed by Lee Winnell, who up until this point was basically most known for being the writer of Saw and starring in that movie. And starring Logan Marshall Green. This movie rocks. This movie is so much fun. Um, if you've never seen Upgrade... Check it out. I don't want to go into the plot too much. It'll kind of give it away. And one of the great things about this movie is all the surprises that come along the way. This movie absolutely rocks. Then we've got Hotel Artemis with an all-star cast of Jodie Foster, Sterling K. Brown, Jeff Goldblum, Dave Bautista, many others. This is a really, really fun movie as well. Directed by Adam Siegel. Or, I'm sorry, Drew Paris. Uh, this movie's great, okay? Um, I included this on a F Five Forgotten Movies a long time ago. Again, science fiction, kind of, but it's mainly in action, and it's got a lot of comedy in it. And again, with a cast like this, it's great. I really enjoy this movie a lot. Then we've got Ready Player One, 
directed by Steven Spielberg, based on the best-selling novel, which I have never read. And that's probably why I enjoy this movie, starring Ty Sheridan and Ben Mendelsohn, sorry. Um, I like this movie. I don't love it, but I do like it, and a lot of people shit all over it. But uh, again, I never read the novel, and you know, for what it is, I think it's an entertaining movie. And the scene that pays homage to The Shining, I think is great. I, I, I laughed my ass off the first time I saw it. I Again, I enjoy this movie. I don't really enjoy this one too much. The Predator. Directed by Shane Black, of all people, who... This is the first one of his movies that I have not liked. Uh, starring Boyd Holbrook and Olivia Dunn. And making a... The best thing... The coolest thing about this movie, in my eyes, is that crazy Gary Busey's son, Jake, makes an appearance in this movie, playing the son of crazy Gary Busey's character for Predator 2. And I thought that was kind of a cool touch, but no. The Predator is definitely the weakest of the Predator movies that doesn't have alien verses in the title. Huge disappointment. But this one kind of came out of nowhere, and it was terrific. A Quiet Place. Starring Emily Blunt and John Krasinski. And co-written by John Krasinski, as well as directed by. This movie's fantastic. I love this movie. And again, it kind of came out of nowhere. And man, is this movie intense. The sequel is also pretty damn good. There's a third one coming out this summer. But this one is just fantastic. Emily Blunt is incredible in this movie. Absolutely love this film. Okay, now we're fully in the horror with Overlord. Starring Wyatt Russell. Uh, I don't even know the other guy's name. Oh, Bokeem Woodbine, I know, but I, I don't remember the other guy's name. Jovan Odepo, I guess, the main character. I'm not sure. This is the first movie I ever saw him in, but... This movie's great. Uh, I included this one on my double feature video with uh, From Dusk Till Dawn. And the reason why is because I said on that video, From Dusk Till Dawn starts off as one thing and totally turns into something else halfway through, as does this film. It starts off as a World War II film and it completely changes direction halfway through and turns into a crazy zombie Nazi movie. I always said this movie would be like Ca Castle Wolfenstein if they did ever make that video game into a movie. This movie's a lot of fun. Then we've got The First Purge. Uh, starring Marissa Tomei. This one is not directed by James DeMonico. He wrote it, but this one is directed by Gerald, Gerard McMurray. Quite frankly, I don't like this movie. Out of the five Purge movies, this one is my least favorite. Although there is one guy, uh, that ain't him, but there's one guy in this movie that is creepy as hell. He puts needles on his on his hands at one point. Uh, if you've seen this movie, you know what I'm talking about. His performance is outstanding. Like I said, that guy is just creepy as hell. The rest of this movie, I didn't really care for at all. Then we've got Strangers, Pray at Night. The sequel to the original film, which has now been rebooted into a new trilogy, I guess that Rennie Harlan is behind. Uh, this one is directed by Johannes Roberts, Roberts and stars uh, Christina Hendricks, the beautiful Christina Hendricks from Mad Men. I like this movie. I don't think it's as good as the original, but I do like it. Now we've got two of the strangest ones of the year, without a doubt. This one, it doesn't get any weirder than this one. Mandy, starring Nicolas Cage, and what's the other guy's name? Linus Roach? Is that his name? Uh, yeah, Linus Roach. This movie is absolutely insane. 
directed by Panos Cosmatos, who is the son of George P. Cosmatos, who directed Tombstone and Rambo 2, among other movies. You will never see another movie like Mandy, okay? This is one of the most original-looking and acted films I have ever seen in my life. I've seen this movie about five times. I still cannot tell you if I like it or not. It is just so bizarre, but Nicolas Cage is fully uncaged in this movie. And like I said, the visual aesthetic of this movie, you feel like you're hallucinating. I don't know if I would recommend this movie to anybody, you know, say, hey, check this out. This movie's great. But if you're interested, it is. You will never forget seeing this movie. <laughs> it is bizarre. And then we've got Suspiria, starring Dakota Johnson, Chloe Grace Moritz, and Tilda Swinton, who Tilda Swinton, who plays four different characters in this movie. This one is directed by Luca Guadagnino. This is the a remake of the Dario Argento classic, of course, and that movie is beloved by so many. And I do. I, I enjoy that film as well. I'm not a Dario Argento guy. I'm sorry. I know that's sacrilegious in horror circles. I'm just not. I've never been. I, I, I like the man. Okay. I give him all the respect in the world, but I, I've just never really connected with his films. Although Suspiria is probably my favorite Argento film that I have seen. Here comes some sacrilege for you. I prefer this one. This movie is at least 45 minutes too long, okay? But when it gets down to it, it is creepy as hell. And there's a dance scene in this movie that, again, once you've seen it, you'll never unsee it. I really enjoyed this movie. And then we go from Suspiria to Halloween. Starring Jamie Lee Curtis. And directed by David Gordon Green. This is the reboot where basically they threw out every sequel after the original. Uh, and this is a direct continuation sequel to the original Halloween. And when this movie came out, I really enjoyed it. I was shocked how much I enjoyed it. I don't enjoy it as much as I did then. I still do like it. And of the new trilogy, it's definitely the best. But I saved this one for last. Hereditary. Written and directed by Ari Aster. And starring Tony Collette in what I feel is one of the best performances of the last 10 years. She is absolutely incredible in this film. I knew nothing about this film going in. Nothing. Other than Tony Collette was the star. This movie creeped the living shit out of me and still does. My niece Nicole, I don't know if she's watching this one. Hi Nicole, if you are, but you want to freak her out? Sneak up behind her and just go... Anybody who's seen Hereditary knows what that is. This movie's great. And it definitely introduced Ari Aster as a force to be reckoned with in the horror genre in particular, but just in cinema in, in general. Guy obviously is a very talented individual. And again, Hereditary, it's not for everyone. And it is. It's a slow burn. But once this movie gets its hooks into you, it does not let go. And again, I cannot stress again how incredible Tony Collette is in this film. So that's it for 2018. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, a possible subscribe, but most importantly, leave those comments. And I really look forward to hearing from you, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Have a great night.